Shays of the Syracuse Nationals, the kid off the sidewalks of New York. We played in the schoolyard, and when you play in the schoolyard, you'd set picks, you'd give and go, you kept moving, you kept the floor open. Dolph was a former All-American at New York University. At that time, NYU was like North Carolina, was like uh, Syracuse. Great teams, and we played basketball uh, the way it was supposed to be played, New York style. Basketball, in its early years, was largely an urban game, it was largely an eastern game, it was largely a Jewish game. And here's the first great Jewish star of the NBA. I respect him tremendously as an individual. He played for the Syracuse Nationals. Shays completed a basketball trifecta of sorts. High school at DeWitt Clinton in the Bronx, college at NYU, and pro ball in upstate New York. Syracuse is about half the size of Brooklyn. Very cold place with a lot of snow. A lot of uh, teams didn't like to play in Syracuse because not only did we have a great team, but whenever they came up there, there was like a blizzard. Until they went indoors, where Shays was usually red hot. The thing that made him extremely difficult to deal with was the fact he had great range on his shots. Number four, a big man who could shoot from anywhere. He can stop and fire up a set shot. You got to be kidding me. He was a pain in the butt to guard. Our back is in my ear. You get on this guy. He's an old guy. He's been around a long time. You shut him down. He takes two steps past the half-court line and puts the ball in both hands and fires up a set shot. Nothing but nets. Dom Shea shooting, bullseye. <sighs> I said, oh my god, this guy's great. But who might he compare to in modern-day basketball terms? They say he was like the Larry Bird of his era, a tremendous player, self-made player. They said the reason they compared him to the Bird is because he was always working hardest. You know, he wanted to improve his free throw shooting, and so he put a smaller rim inside of a regulation rim and practiced on that. He was a dominant, or one of the dominant players in that era. Dolph is one of the greatest rebounders in the league. There you see him in action against the New York Knicks. He didn't have the great athletic ability that players later on developed. But the game wasn't that athletic back then. It was a different game that was played. Shea's passing behind his back to Seymour, who puts it away. And then he starts to play up on him tight. He starts driving past me, very slow and deliberate. You know, he was not a speed merchant. He just got to where he wanted to go. He scored 19,000 points in a 16-year career. Dolph was very special as an offensive player, a tough rebounder. In that first full decade of the NBA, no player pulled in more rebounds or scored more points than Brooklyn's Dolph Shays. For Dolph Shays to lead the league in scoring and rebound and to have his career end where he's one of the top all-time players in those regards is just a tribute. And, it, and that's why he is a, he was an automatic Hall of Famer as a lock. Dolph Shays was the most talented of forwards. Shays rebounding. In terms of that entire 50s was able to carry the Syracuse team. The mark of a great player is how you lead your team in terms of winning. He got to the finals three times. He won a championship. The Nats nip the Pistons in this game, 87 to 84, and they go on from here to win the 1955 Pro Championship. And it was just a euphoric time for Syracuse. To be on a world's championship team was one of the greatest thrills of my life. The great thing about Dolph to me is, and this is really how he stands up to the test of time. The NBA had an all 25-year team and then an all 35-year team. And of course, the top 50 players after the first 50 years, he made all three. From the Syracuse Nationals, number four, 